Hello and welcome to First Post. Throughout the week, you're inundated with news, the heavy duty kinds. So, since it's the weekend, we decided to bring you something different. Welcome to Beyond Bizarre. All the odd, offbeat, outlandish stories that didn't make it to the headlines. People sure do love their wine, but some people practically survive on it for five days in the Australian bush. What are we talking about? Just sit back and relax, pardon the pun, and let our next report tell you the story. Benjamin Franklin once said, wine makes daily living easier, less hurried with fewer tensions and more tolerance. And when you're stranded in the wilderness for five days without any food, you need all of the tolerance that you can get. And if wine provides that, so be it. This story is about Lillian Ip. She is a 48-year-old woman and recently she set off on a weekend trip. Through the dense bush in Australia's Victoria state, it was meant to be a short one. But during the journey, she took a wrong turn and hit a dead end. Then her vehicle got stuck in the mud. She had no food, no water with her. All she had were a bunch of sweets and a bottle of wine. Not exactly an ideal survival kit. But they saved her life because she was stranded in the wild. And this is all she had for sustenance. But here's the catch. Ip doesn't even drink. She was planning to give the bottle as a present to her mother. But she tried to love the wine she was with, pardon the pun. So she drank it to save her life. And while Ip was chugging down the bottle, her loved ones were freaking out. Ip's family had raised an alarm after she didn't show up, and a team of rescuers were out looking for her. Five days later, she was discovered by emergency services. She was spotted by a rescue helicopter and was seen waving her arms frantically, surrounded by towering trees. She was immediately taken to the hospital and was treated for dehydration. Thank goodness for that bottle, right? But Ip isn't the first person to survive on a bizarre diet while being stranded. A sailor from Dominica was adrift at sea for 24 days. He made it through, thanks to a bottle of ketchup. The company Heinz later tracked him down and gave him a new boat. In another case, two women were lost in the icy wilderness of Maine. They were rescued after four days with a half-empty frozen bottle of Mountain Dew. But coming back to Ip, when she was rescued, her request was simple. Water and a cigarette, which she got, and no one can blame her. Though the world does question her distaste for wine, she didn't like it despite the heroics it performed for her. But if you love your wine and need a sign to carry a bottle everywhere, this is probably it. Just don't tell a health expert you got this piece of advice from us it isn't the best. Now let's talk about smoking. Smoking is a tough habit to kick. Sometimes you try everything and nothing seems to work. So you resort to desperate measures, like locking your head in a cage. Here's our next report. Smoking is an unhealthy habit, and you don't need to wait for pre-movie trailers and theatres to tell you that. Smoking is injurious to health. This habit is addictive and really harmful, but kicking it is just as tough. Often it takes multiple tries and multiple different strategies to do so. But what happens when nothing works? Desperate times call for desperate measures, and sometimes one simply needs to think outside the box and inside a cage. We are talking about a man in Turkey named Ibrahim Yusel. His story first made rounds in 2013. Until then, he had been smoking for 26 years. He started when he was 16. And since then, he smoked on a daily basis. Two packs of cigarettes a day. His father died of lung cancer, so Yusel had been desperate to quit. But nothing worked despite several attempts. He returned to the habit, 
Then he came up with another idea. To lock his head inside a cage, which is made of 40 meters of copper wire. But he is unsure of his own willpower. So he entrusts the keys to his family. This is surely a bizarre contraption and the very idea of it is strange, but kudos to him for trying to kick the habit because it is fatal. Smoking causes cancer, heart disease, strokes, lung diseases and diabetes, among many other problems. Tobacco kills over 8 million people every year. Around 1.2 million of these are non-smokers who die from exposure to secondhand smoke. So kudos to Yusel for trying to quit smoking, even if he took the road not taken to achieve the goal, Robert Frost would be proud. Our next story is about an American woman, a mother and an author. She wrote a book about coping with grief. This was after the death of her husband. Now, she's been accused of murdering him. This story is no less than the plot of a mystery novel. And a bizarre one at that. So brace yourselves, because this is going to be a roller coaster. This story is about a woman named Corey Richens. One night, Richens gave her husband a cocktail. This was around 9 p.m. She then left the room and returned around 3 a.m only to find her husband dead at the foot of their bed. They had been married for nine years. This incident happened in the month of March last year. About a year later, she published a book, a children's book, titled, Are You With Me? It's about navigating grief after the loss of a loved one. Now, Richens is under investigation for allegedly murdering her husband. Quite the plot twist, right? Investigators say that she killed her husband with a lethal dose of illicit fentanyl. Court documents show that she purchased the drug in the months leading up to his death. Investigators also say that the poisoning wasn't abrupt. Weeks before the death, the couple celebrated Valentine's Day together. They had dinner at home, shortly after which her husband became very ill. He even told a friend about this said he thought his wife was trying to poison him. And he was probably right. For now, Richens has been arrested and is in custody. Now, you may be wondering, why would she do something like this? The investigation is still underway, but there is one big clue. The case seems to have something to do with property. Apparently, Richens fought with her husband over a multi-million dollar estate a mansion worth $2 million. She wanted to buy it, her husband didn't. But when he died, she closed the deal just the day after. And before his death, she even tried to change a life insurance policy to make herself the sole beneficiary. These clues seem believable, but there are still some plot holes because this is an ongoing investigation. But one thing is clear, it is just as intriguing as it is odd. If this is actually true, then not only did a woman murder her husband, but earned money off of it. Moral of the story, when a little voice in your head tells you something is off, something is probably off. That's it for today's episode of Beyond Bazaar. We'll be back again next week with stories that are anything but basic.